how much time do they need to convince investors that actually they can have a handle on the situation? Well, uh, I would probably say, listen, the context has not helped in the sense that we had external factors pushing here. Uh, there's definitely idiosyncratic risk, as you mentioned. Uh, but I would argue that we are probably right about the time that we might see a change of fortune. Uh, we might have needed a sacrificial lamb. We got it. And now we need to get, uh, the market needs to get slapped a bit. And, uh, well, 50 billion will go a long way if you look at the numbers. And that's what the market ends up respect, respecting at the end of the day. It's more than enough in terms of the short-term financing needs. They have to deal a little bit about the short-term instruments that let us on the backs, but with a lot of money you can do that. And in, in a fairly, I wouldn't call it a liquid, but less liquid market, I would say now the odds are shifting uh, very much in favor of Argentina. Uh, but, you know, you need to see it to believe it, and I would say let's, you know, let's, let's watch our screens. Here's the extension of the good chart that Francine had earlier. Here's uh, peso versus dollar back 15 years with the uh, really difficult time of 2002. And what's so elegant about this, Janos, is we're really right on trend in this period, 14, 15, 16, and then we simply give way out three standard deviations plus. Do you just assume IMF comes in and does a later Stan Fisher? Is it just where the IMF comes in a la 98 or 2002 and just gets things fixed? Well, um, I'll just start by saying that it was, I was the Argentina economist in the early 90s for Solomon Brothers. So in that context, you know, uh, history doesn't repeat itself, but it certainly rhymes. And um, mm -hmm. listen, I think the IMF has already come in. So that's, that's, I think, the point. But do they need to come and, in again? Uh, I totally agree with you. They've made their first approach. but. It's safe to say it hasn't worked. Do they need to make another tranche of salvation? No. I think just, uh, you know, the, uh, the Argentine central bank got the bullets. They're going to have to start using them. And uh, I think we'll see an impact out of that. Henrietta, this goes to investment grade credit. It's all great macroeconomics and international economics. But there's a dynamic here across the higher coupon credit space. You're working in the triple B, triple B plus space. Does this knock on to your world? Um, I think uh, two things knock on. Um, you know, we talked about central banks earlier on. That is, their behavior is definitely playing um, in our markets <clears throat> and, and their behavior. Um, and confidence and liquidity, I'm going to mention as well. Um, you know, if you look at what happened uh, over the month of May um, in the European credit markets, you had a steep rise in terms of credit spreads. Um, you know, if you look at the lows this year, we were at 74 basis points on investment grade credit. Uh, we've moved up to 120. That's a big move um, if you look at standard deviations. Um, and that uh, you know, was prompted by um, what happened in Italy in particular uh, over the last few weeks. Um, and for me, the moves that we saw on Italian debt were also due to liquidity and liquidity in the market um, that is difficult at the moment.